Growing up, I was an avid video gamer, particularly on the PC. We did not have consoles growing up, unless you count our ColecoVision, that's how far back I go. So I played PC games, adventure games, and um, uh, flight simulators, and arcade games, and actually all sorts of different things. And then once I hit my college years, and really my early years as a working professional, video games moved uh, well, really, I moved away from video games. Um, not that I didn't like video games anymore, but they just weren't something I took. I, uh, I put a lot of time into, and eventually I just moved out of it. But this weird thing would happen. Every maybe five or ten years, I get a hankering for video gaming, and I'd buy a console. And so I bought a PlayStation 2, for example, and played some Kingdom Hearts and whatever was the Final Fantasy that came out at the time. And really enjoyed them, and played for a couple of months, and then never played them again. Just, I wasn't into video gaming. Uh, part of the problem, too, is that console gaming is different from PC gaming, and I just didn't have the Twitch skills. And so I got rid of that. Later I got a Wii, enjoyed that, but same pattern happened. And then a few years ago, well, actually, a um, year and a half ago, uh, I got really interested in Nintendo's new console, the Switch. And back when, this was back not long after it had launched, and it was really hard to find a console. And so I, I found one and uh, ordered one along with a copy of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I had played some of Twilight Princess on the Wii and then got stuck. And I would played a smattering of the original Zelda on emulators and such. But I had otherwise essentially no exposure to experience with actually playing Zelda. And here's the problem. There is still a part of me that doesn't play video games in the classic sense. I've played a lot of games where you slash things with swords and where you shoot things. And I kind of know how that works. So that doesn't really excite me as a core mechanic. And when I heard that Breath of the Wild was an open world exploration game, I thought, hmm, if they do that right, if I can literally just spend my time wandering around different environments, exploring the world, um, if there's you know, some combat here and there, but this is about just me in a world, that sounds like my kind of game. And oh boy, is that my kind of a game. I have put well over 80 hours into Breath of the Wild. Um, as somebody who, again, has not been playing video games for years and years and years. This is my bag, as it turned out. Why? And before I get into that, I should point out, I have a good friend of mine who loves the Zelda games. And doesn't like Breath of the Wild. Because it is so unlike a typical Zelda game. And I totally get that. I am not here to say that... Um, you should like Breath of the Wild. But what that game does do is open world exploration. It is thus far my perfect um, example of that genre. Where there's something to do, there's a, there's a plot, a little bit, but it is entirely on you to make that game what you want it to be. And one of the ways they made that work is by making the, the world huge but also varied. It's easy to make an open world game where everything looks the same and so it doesn't matter. Breath of the Wild, it does not take you a long time to get to a, a part of the world that feels very different from where you were 10 minutes ago or half an hour ago. Um... And so it rewards exploration. It rewards going out and doing things by the very nature of the world, not by getting a little, you know, 10 point plus for exploring the world. It's not an explicit reward. You get the reward that you would get for walking out your front door and exploring a part of the neighborhood you never have before. You get to see new things. But it also gives you stuff to do. Everywhere you go in Breath of the Wild, there's something to do. There's something 
in there that you can interact with. Maybe very simple, but my gosh, does this world feel <clears throat> like a world. Now, it's a sparsely inhabited world. It's basically post-apocalyptic, and that works. That makes sense for the game. <coughs> now, um, in the chat room, somebody brings up the... Um, the stamina and the weapon degradation and so forth and so on. To me, those were integral to my experience. Those were very fundamental to why this game worked so well for me because what they were basically saying is <clears throat> you can explore the world, but you cannot do that consequence free, right? This is not a child sandbox where you can knock over a mountain five minutes in you have to work up to that. You have to, to progress and you have to build your character. Now, that frustrates me when it's basically you have to grind you know, and do these things over and over again before you are reasonably competent. And that's one of the things I, I, I think Breath of the Wild does well, that you never feel like you have to do that. Um, there are places where you need to get good to you know, finish that part of the game, um, but it doesn't feel like, okay, now I'm going to go to this one area and do this one thing 50 times over and over again, just so I have the number that will let me get over there and do that thing. Um, at most, you go and you do something, you practice something, so you learn the actual skill. You learn what you're looking for, you learn um, what the, how the enemies work, and how the enemies interact, and how certain um, elements in the world interact. And um, so I, I thought they did a, an extremely impressive job of balancing all that to give you not training wheels, but um, practical limitations on how much you can do. Um, I would love a game where you can just do anything at any time, but that is also hard to make satisfying. And so I think that's something that, for a, in a practical sense, they did well. Uh, what's also remarkable about the game is the artistry behind it. The visual and audio and, and audible audible um feel of that world what's great about breath of the wild is it doesn't look like the witcher it doesn't look like horizon zero dawn that slightly abstract slightly cartoony slightly anime art style really fits the world and really fits the game because again, it is a post-apocalyptic world. It is a wild world, the breath of the wild. You know, you are supposed to be exploring this, this wide open area, this wide open environment. And so making it hyper detailed wouldn't have, have worked right. Cyberpunk should look, you know, intense and gritty and overwhelming. Breath of the Wild should not. And it's impressive how much they use that muted color palette without it feeling drab, without it feeling um, uninteresting. Now, obviously, that's going to be a, a very personal perspective, um, but I, I thought they did an amazing job of doing that while also making the, you know, it's easy to, to do, have a muted color palette then have everything feel like it's gray. And they have a variety of different environments that all feel very different visually and, and with, with color. Um, but yeah, I, I think... It's one of those things that works extremely well. And it's also interesting hearing the you know, um, same thing with the audio. The use of a mostly piano score creates this minimalism, this sense of being um, in, a, in an environment where humans are rare, or elves, whatever they are in that world, um, where people are rare. Um, you, know, you don't have these big sweeping scores to give you a sense of epics because there are no epics. This is not a world of epics. It's a world where big things can happen, but you don't have armies of thousands. So this simple score underscores the themes of the game and the world of the and, and the world of the game. What I also really appreciate is how they balance that wilderness environment. Getting back to my earlier point. I'm remembering specifically moments where I was just exploring old ruins and realizing I'm the only person around. I can just enjoy this thing. I'm not having to worry that a bird is going to swoop in and start 
attacking me and pecking my head. I can just explore this ruin and find out what's in here and just do the thing without it doing that annoying video game thing of saying, oh, you haven't been in danger in two minutes. We have to add a danger for you to interact with because everyone has to constantly be using their weapon in every game they're using, every game they're playing. Really, really impressive there. Um, so yeah, I, I, th that just kind of blew me away. Um, and I'm also impressed with how much time and effort they put into the cooking system. This is something that I really did not interact with much. I don't find that whole thing of finding every single recipe particularly you know, compelling for me. But seeing the depth of that, seeing how many things you could do with that, and seeing how that did impact the game. I could tell that if I learned the rules to this, I could figure out how to make really powerful, really long-lasting, essentially healing potions. Um, but I didn't have to. You know, the, the game wasn't built such that you have to master every system in order to get to the end of the game and, and win it, which is really, really, um, you know, worthwhile, really impressive. Um, it's, it's a good example of how I think those sorts of systems can be built effectively, where, again, there's this temptation to say, it's in the game, and that's, we've got to make sure that everybody is consuming everything in the game. That in order to have a satisfying experience, you have to kind of 100% everything. No! I will be perfectly satisfied with the game without exploring every nook and cranny, because some of those nooks and crannies I don't care about, and that's totally fine. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a game that, in a sense, it's not a game. It is a vacation that you take in Hyrule. You pop in that cartridge or you, you know, click on that icon and you are plopped into Hyrule and you can just wander around and explore it and interact with things and do stuff. And there's so many quests, there are so many things that you can get involved and do without ever, um, completely independent of the big plots. One of the things I really appreciate is that, and I, I mean completely independent. Again, in, in a lot of the other games I've tried since then, there's a sense of, okay, yeah, you don't have to do everything. But if you don't, then you won't get the full story. Not so in Breath of the Wild. Um, you know, these side quests are interesting and fun and can be um, memorable but they don't have to tie in. It doesn't all have to be one big thing that makes you feel like you're losing out. That's one of the problems, is that when everything works together, yes, it feels impressive, but then you kind of have to do everything, right? You can't just say, look, I don't want to spend, you know, all my time working on all these, these different little loose ends of which I only care about 80% or 60 or 40 or 10. Very, very well done. Again, for this kind of game, post-apocalyptic world, people scattered all over the place. Things aren't going to all weave together. It makes sense and it works. Um, so, I totally appreciate why long-term fans of the franchise um, don't find this to be a satisfying Zelda experience. To those people, I would say, pretend that this is not a mainline Zelda game. Pretend that a couple of fans came to Nintendo and said, we want to make an open world exploration game in Hyrule. We, want it, we, we, we love open world. We want to do the open world concept with these characters and in this world. Will you let us do that? And Nintendo said yes. So do not fear Breath of the Wild. Do not think that if you like Breath of the Wild, it commits you to enjoying you know, open world exploration and all of the things that are implied in it for every Zelda game of all time. Appreciate it for how good of an open world game it is using these characters. How effectively it does that. So those are some quick thoughts on, on Breath of the Wild. Didn't want to do kind of a full scale review scale thing because I don't know how to do that in video games. Uh, but hopefully this is useful to you and I thank you for watching.